Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. And today's video is gonna be a little different than what I normally do here on my channel, but I thought it would be fun to do a little get ready with me and show you guys from start to finish, like my makeup, my hair, uh, my outfit, I guess, and just like what I do to get ready in the morning and hopefully motivate you to get ready this morning. I know sometimes it's hard when we're at home a lot these days and not seeing a lot of people. Um, it's sometimes hard to motivate yourself to like get ready, but I don't know about you, but for me, it makes such a big difference in how I feel and like how productive I am with the rest of my day. If I just take a little bit of time to take care of myself and get myself ready for the day. So I'm going to show you that whole thing. I hope you can like get ready with me if it is morning when you're watching this or maybe get a little bit of inspiration. Without any further ado, let's get into this video. All right. Hi, I just got out of the shower. Clearly I didn't wash my hair. So I'm working with second day hair today. Um, but first I'm going to show you my skincare. So as you can see, I do not have like perfect flawless skin. My skin is like very red. Um, this is just real life. I feel like so many times the like people I see doing skincare on Instagram or YouTube or wherever are like, have this flawless skin. And I'm like, okay, like this doesn't, I don't know if this really helps me, <laughs> but clearly I do not have flawless skin and I, my skin is extremely sensitive. So I have to use my products accordingly. Now I've told you this before, but the products that I use are from a brand that my friend is in the process of developing. So unfortunately I can't really share it with you yet, but I am still going to share with you kind of like the steps that I go through so that you can at least impl implement that into your routine. I wash my face in the shower with just a very like gentle uh, cleanser from this brand. And then next I'm using a serum. So you kind of want to go from like the lightest weight product to um, like the thicker products last as you're layering your skincare so that like the lightweight stuff can actually get into your skin. And then obviously the like thicker, heavier weight stuff is going to get into your skin anyway. And then next I have this product is called the expression line treatment and it's specifically for like fine lines and wrinkles. So I really concentrate this product like on my forehead because that's where I'm starting to already see some fine lines. I concentrate it up there and then I also put it like around my eyes where you get crow's feet and then also like along where my smile lines will show up. And then I also take a pump of this and I put it on my neck. This is something my mom taught me. She said, always use your skincare products that you use on your face. Also use them on your neck because your neck shows age too. And then lastly, I use just like a moisturizer again from this brand that I'll be able to tell you more about <laughs> in the future. And then last but not least, I always rub like whatever's left over on the top of my hands because your hands show age as well. Our hands are so exposed to the environment. I mean, think about how often like we're wearing long sleeves, but then our hands are showing. So then our hands are getting like more sun exposure than any other part of your body, like all year round. They also get exposed to the cold more often. Um, we use them all the time. So I mean, your hands do age pretty rapidly, so it's important to take care of them. So one of the things I do to take care of them is I always put my extra like skincare from my face. I always kind of rub it onto my hands. I like to wait for a minute for my skincare products to all kind of soak into my skin before I put my makeup on. So I'm gonna get my curling iron heated up. I'm gonna curl my hair today. I just let it air dry yesterday. So I like haven't done anything to my hair. So I'm just going to get my curling iron heated up and then like brush my hair and use a little bit of product in my hair. So let's start there. The only product I'm gonna use in my hair today is this serum. It's a hair serum. Um, this particular serum is made with like hemp seed oil and it smells incredible. It smells very like, I don't know, like very earthy. I mean, it's made with hemp seed oil. So I think you can kind of imagine like it's, it's very earthy and natural smelling. Um, and it makes your hair look so nice and feel so nice. I kind of concentrate it on the ends, um, where my hair is a little bit more dry. And then after I've kind of concentrated it on the ends of my hair, I kind of work my way up with my hands with just whatever leftover product is on my hair. Cause this serum just makes your hair look so like glossy and shiny and nice. It also helps with flyaways. I just don't want it like up in the roots of my hair where it's going to make me look like greasy. You know, I should be using a heat protectant spray, but I don't actually have one right now. It ran out. So 
I need to buy that. This is real life. <laughs> um, I've used the Tresemme heat protectant spray. It's in like a black bottle. I've used that for years because it doesn't give your hair any kind of like a weird texture or anything. Let's get into my makeup now because I've given my skin a little bit of a minute to absorb all of those products. Starting with foundation, I like to apply my foundation with a beauty blender or actually the one I have is like a Real Techniques little sponge. These Real Techniques sponges are just as good as a beauty blender in my opinion. I've had both and I, I would tell you don't waste your money on an actual beauty blender. They're so expensive. Get a Real Techniques one. They're like at Target and they're just as good. For my foundation, I've started using a new foundation. This one does not actually match my skin that well. I got it recently and obviously Sephora can't do like their normal color matching thing where they like put the thing up against your face because COVID um, and you can't like try anything in the store because COVID. So we were like holding things up to my face like trying to figure out what would match and this one is just a little bit too yellow for me but I don't know. I just hate returning products. I don't know. Comment down below and let me know if you're that way. I hate returning makeup products and skincare products and things that I know are just gonna like be thrown away and go to waste. It's just like, mm, it's so wasteful. And I know like they're happy to do it at places like that, but I just, I don't know, I feel bad. And like, this is not, it's not so far off that it's not usable for me. I, I don't really care if my foundation doesn't match like perfectly, perfectly, as long as it like, as long as I'm able to blend it to where it doesn't like look bad, you know, um, I'm good with it. So this is the NARS All Day Luminous Weightless Foundation. Um, which it's called luminous and weightless foundation, which seem like weird. I don't know. That's not what I would name it because it's like a more matte finish. So, which is why I probably wouldn't call it luminous. Um, it's like a satin to matte, like kind of finish, which is what I like. And then it's called weightless, which it is like a very thin formula. And, um, if you don't use a lot of it, it's probably more like medium coverage, but I, layer it up because you know as i told you i don't have the most flawless skin and you can definitely layer this to be full coverage which is what i like foundation is like one of the very few things that i'm willing to splurge and spend a little bit more money on um foundation and like eyeshadow i would say are the two things that i totally think are worth spending more money on like a higher end brand um but then there are other things like powder like um mascara like eyebrow stuff that i just personally don't feel like it's worth it to um spend a lot of money on those things comment down below and let me know what like what are your beauty splurges like what are the makeup products that for you it's like worth it to spend a little bit of more money on and what are the things that you like always buy from the drugstore or from target I always buy like the cheaper versions of i'd like to know oh the other thing that i think is worth it to spend more money on is um is eyeliner okay i'm done with foundation now i'm on to concealer this concealer it's kind of hard to find i end up buying it on amazon most of the time it is like a super cheap concealer i think it's like seven dollars and this bottle lasts me like probably a year and a half, which I don't know, maybe that's disgusting. You're probably not supposed to keep makeup that long, but I use it every single day and it lasts me that long because you don't need much. I just use this kind of like in that triangle, like from the center of my eye down to my nose and then out to like kind of the outer corner of my eye. And I kind of go heavy with my concealer. I, I watched a video from Wayne Goss. If you guys have ever watched his, um, makeup videos he's like one of the beauty people here on youtube i watched one of his videos like ages ago ages ago and he was talking about or he like showed the difference between like putting on a minimal amount of concealer and putting on like a heavier amount under the eyes and he was basically saying that it actually looks better if you use like a, a heavier hand with your concealer which kind of seems like not what you would think but it was really interesting to like see the side by side that he was showing and I actually think he's totally right like from my own personal experience I feel like my concealer actually looks better if I kind of go a little bit heavier with it on at least in my under eye area um, and then I use my finger to blend it I think this is a very like thick formula 
and I just think that my finger does the best job of blending it. It really like warms up the product. And then I just put some of the excess down the bridge of my nose just to kind of highlight. I feel like it needs it to like kind of balance out because I feel like otherwise my nose looks really like weirdly dark or something. I don't know. Next up is powder. I'm actually like almost out. This is the powder I've been using. It's NYX um, mineral matte finishing powder. This powder is okay. Um, I'm actually, I'm not going to repurchase it because it has talc in it as one of the ingredients, which I recently learned is an ingredient that can sometimes make powders. Um, you know, like when powders get like, what's the word? Like they get all like clumpy on your face. It's usually because of the talc I've learned. So I'm going to try to find a powder that doesn't have talc. Um, those powders that tend to be a little bit more light. So that's what I'm going to try to find next time. I use like a stipply kind of brush like this for my powder. Sorry, my camera just turned off. I don't know why I did that. Um, but I like stipple my, um, powder onto my face instead of like rubbing it on because if you rub it on, you can actually like rub off some of your foundation and concealer and stuff. So I just stipple it on. I have fairly oily skin. So um, one thing I do in the summertime is I will actually like take a little bit of powder on the edge of my beauty blender and I will put it like under my eyes, kind of like the baking technique, but I just put it like directly under my eyes because I have problems with like my eyelids are oily, my skin like around my eyes is kind of oily. So I have problems with my mascara running and I find that if I do that like little um, like clumps of powder here and then I kind of brush it off, I find that that helps my uh what's it called mascara not like run on my face all right next up for bronzer i use the hula bronzer by benefit this is like a classic bronzer or i don't even know if you call it bronzer like a contour shade i use it as a contour so like you know under my cheekbones kind of around like the perimeter of my face and then like along the sides of my nose i use this angled brush it's kind of like fluffy and soft I'm just really going like along my hairline on my forehead and it kind of just warms up the face. It kind of like, I don't know, maybe makes your forehead smaller. I don't really, I don't know. I just do this because I feel like it balances out. I feel like if you only put it here, your face looks like unbalanced. But then if you put it up here, then it's like all looks cohesive. For my nose contour, I use this like kind of fluffy little... I think it's basically a contour brush. I don't really know what else you would use it for because it's kind of too big for your eyes. So that's what I use it for. I use it for contour and it's broken. So here we are. I really make sure I tap this off because I do not want like a heavy line <laughs> along the sides of my nose. I just do not think that looks good. All right, so contour is done. The next thing I do is I use a little bit of bronzer. I don't always use this and I feel like as we head into the winter months, I'll probably stop, but I love this for the summertime and I kind of just love it in general. So I'm still using it. And that is this, I got this as like a free giveaway once upon a time. It is from Estee Lauder. But it's just this like super shimmery, really like warm bronzy shade. I, you definitely could not use this as a contour because it is like shimmery and warm and it would not look realistic like as a shadow because it's so warm toned in like shadows obviously are like more gray and cool toned. So you definitely would not want to use this like in the hollows of your cheeks, but I use it more like almost more like a, you would use a blush. Um, I don't use blush because you guys saw my skin is like very red. And so as my makeup kind of wears out throughout, wears off throughout the day, I have a lot of redness poke through. So blush just does not look good on me. So I use this con or this bronzer more like where, what I would use a blush for. Um, and it just gives like a nice kind of glowy, um, glow to the skin it is a little bit shimmery so on camera it almost might look like too shimmery but i promise in person it looks really beautiful and i'm just kind of using it like on my cheekbones it's not a dark it's not like super dark it is a bronzer but it's not super dark um and then kind of like along my forehead kind of where the sun would naturally kiss you so i'm not going like up into my hairline like i did with the other um contour but more just like along the center of my forehead like where the sun would naturally kiss you kind of on this like tip of my nose center of my nose um, a little bit like on my chin and it just gives like this nice kind of glowy summery kind of effect which i know you guys are like 
more and it's fall. I'm in denial, okay? I love the summertime. Okay, now we're on to eyeshadow, which I feel like is such a individual thing when it comes to like eyeshadow colors, but I will tell you the brand that I almost exclusively use for eyeshadows is Urban Decay. Urban Decay's eyeshadows are the best I've ever used in terms of like color payoff, longevity. Um, I think what you're getting for the price is pretty decent. They are on the pricier side, but like this Naked 2 palette, I have literally had since high school and it is still going strong. It's still like, the colors are still beautiful and look amazing. My The palette looks like disgusting and dirty, but like honestly, whose eyeshadow palette looks clean? Be honest, like nobody's eyeshadow palette looks clean. The other palette that I use very frequently is the Na Naked Basics palette, also from Urban Decay. And this is just such a great, as you can see, I've used it a ton. Again, I, this is another one I've had since, I'm pretty sure since high school. Um, and it just has so many good neutral shades. This shade right here, which I'm like almost out of, is clearly one of my favorites. It's just like such a great matte um, color for like your lid and stuff like that. But anyway, um, for today, what I'm gonna be using, this kind of, I almost, it's almost like a coppery champagne color. I like shimmery colors on the lid. I think it's pretty, but I kind of alternate. Like I said, I kind of like to try different things, which like it's makeup, it washes off. Like you can try different things and if you hate it, just don't do it again. I really blend this like up into my crease and everything. I just think it helps everything blend more nicely. I will use like a different crease color, but I just think everything blends better when you like kind of extend the lid shade a little bit. Do you guys watch beauty gurus like in their makeup tutorials? I feel like I go through phases where I like will watch someone and then I like kind of get over it, you know? Next up for the contour shade, I'm using this color, it's called Faint. I don't know if you like want me to share like the actual colors, but it's this like kind of sable colored, it's a matte shade. I'm gonna use that in my crease. I just dropped my brush. I like doing a shimmer on my lid and then a matte in the crease because I feel like the shimmer kind of like brings that part of your eyelid like forward and more prominent. And then the matte shade like pushes that back almost visually, which like creates more of that like contrast and makes your eyes look like bigger and bolder, in my opinion. I don't always do this. Sometimes I use a matte shade on my lid and a shimmery shade in my crease. Like I, I don't know, I break all the rules, but I do think that this is like, creates a nice effect when you do like a shimmery shade on the lid and then something more matte in the crease. And then I use like this shimmery shade um, it's just like a super light kind of shimmery shade in my inner corner just to brighten up the eye a bit. I think it looks pretty. And then I use this more matte, like banana-y uh, light color in my crease, or not in my crease, in my like brow bone, right under my brows. Now onto brows. I brush out my brows. This is literally an old mascara wand that I washed off and use like as a brow spoolie. So you do not need to buy a brow spoolie. You just wash off one of your old mascara wands. And then I am like not a brow queen at all. I'm, I don't know. I just like work with what I've got and I use a little bit of like a brow setting, uh, whatever you call this. It's like a little tube of stuff. I don't know that this is really the best but it just kind of like puts my brows in place. So I kind of just like go with the way my brows want to be. I do not have like beautifully arched brows or anything like that. And I don't even know if the, if I could draw that. I don't know. I just, this is just what I work with. Now we've moved on to eyeliner. Whoa! Eyeliner and mascara. I don't always wear eyeliner, but every time I do, I'm like, man, that looks nice. I should do this more often and then I don't do it again. You know you know how that goes. I curl my lashes before I use um, eyeliner. If you aren't curling your lashes, girl, girl, curl your lashes. It makes the biggest difference in the world. So I curl my lashes first and then I put um, eyeliner on because if you do it the other way around and you curl your lashes after liner, I don't know about you, but I find that my eyelash curler like rubs off some of my eyeliner and like makes it look not look good. I'm gonna curl my lashes off camera though because I feel like it looks weird and I don't think you wanna see that horror show. I always start my eyeliner or I, yeah, I do my eyeliner on 
like my I'm right-handed I do it on my left eye first because this is like this is awkward right and then this feels natural so I do it on the awkward side first because whatever ends up happening over here, you know, like my, if my wing ends up weird or whatever, it's easy for me to match that on this side because I feel like this is like a more comfortable hand position and I have more control. Whereas if I do this side first and get it looking like flawless, it's really hard for me to match it over on this side where my hand's like all awkward, you know? Okay, just did my eyeliner and my mascara off camera. I just do my eyeliner kind of on like the outer two thirds of my eye. I do a pretty thin line and then just like a tiny little flick, nothing crazy. Um, and then lastly, I'm gonna do my lips. I'm using this lip crayon from Maybelline. I really, really, really like this. I like the formula, I like the color, I like everything about it. This color is called Stay Exceptional color number 25 um, but it's like this little crayon and it's like I don't know it's kind of a satiny finish I have a little bit of um, literally Vaseline I use Vaseline on my lips I have a little bit of that on my lips so it's looking a little bit like shimmery or not shimmery but you know what I mean like a little shinier than it probably would if you just put it on like plain uh, lips that had nothing on them, but it's like a satin to matte finish, but it feels really like moisturizing, which I appreciate because I have very dry lips, especially as we head into the winter months, like my lips get so, so dry and like crack. I think this color is so pretty for like fall and winter as like a day to day, um, kind of natural color. It's just a little bit like on the darker side of natural, but it's like very wearable and I just like it. So makeup is now done. Moving on to hair. It's a one and one quarter inch curling iron. Um, it's Revlon, nothing special, but I had a Revlon curling iron for like 10 plus years and it just recently crapped out on me. And I was like, dude, this thing lasted me 10 years. I'm buying another Revlon because I am very impressed and they're like $25 or something like that. I kind of do my hair, I mean I do it similarly every day but I kind of will like vary it a bit just depending on what I'm feeling. I always, always, always curl these front pieces away from my face and I always leave a little bit of the end out because um, I don't want it to look like curly cue you know? Um, and then from there, that's where I kind of like vary from day to day. Some days I'll kind of go like back and forth, like I'll curl the next piece forward and the next piece back backwards. Some, some days I'll pull, I'll curl everything backwards on one side and everything away, like away from my face, I mean, um, on the other side, which that's kind of my go-to, like if I don't want to think about it, that's what I do. Um, but I think maybe I'll do like every other direction today, I don't know. I don't separate my hair into different sections because I just feel like that makes it take, take longer. I do have extremely thick hair, like I have a lot, a lot of hair. So I mean, I kind of like have to take sections as I go, but I don't like pull half of my hair up or do any of that business because I just think it prolongs the process. Okay, hair is done um, or it's curled, but I was just waiting for it to cool before I kind of like run my fingers through it and zhuzh it. So what I usually do is I like flip over my hair and kind of just like play around with it, loosen it up a little bit, you know, run my fingers through it a bit. So I just think it looks better that way. Um, and then I'll take a mirror and like look at the back of my hair and see if there's anything that needs like touching up um, before I call it a day with my hair. I really could use some dry shampoo, honestly, for a little bit of volume today, but I'm out of dry shampoo. Did I tell you I'm like out of almost everything today? Um, also, obviously I got myself dressed. It's like, it's fall, but we have this like weirdly warm day today. So I'm just wearing like a tank top with a little thing over the top and then oh, <laughs> black jeans. Um, and then for perfume, I use Black Opium by YSL, this stuff. It smells so good. So just a couple spritzes of that. Put on my wedding ring. And that's it. I am ready for the day.
All right, you guys, that is the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, something a little different from me, a little get ready with me. I hope this gave you some motivation to get yourself ready today if you're watching this in the morning or get ready tomorrow if you're watching this later in the day. Um, comment down below and let me know what your favorite part of your getting ready routine is. Do you like doing your makeup? Do you like doing your hair? Do you like taking your nice shower? What is it that you like doing um, to get yourself ready and what is it that makes you feel good? Like this video if you enjoyed. Make sure you're subscribed and have your bell notifications turned on. That way you don't miss any future videos from me and I will see you guys again in the next one. Bye.